Hey everybody, that's Mike Florio. I'm at odds with him regarding the Dishon Watson issue. And he always tries to take the case and spin it in a way where it looks like he hopes Watson is guilty of something, right? Sean Watson is innocent. He has not been charged with a thing. And Mike is part of this public court that's trying to convict him on the other side of it. Simply saying that Deshaun did nothing wrong, and there's a bigger issue here. Much bigger. Let me show you something here. Oh, and then I have to know, Floyd always has a black guy on that's always agreeing him with him, like this fellow's, you know, nodding in agreement. Nod, nod, just listening, listening, listening. Nod, 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 in agreement, right? Yeah, Mike can't stand being challenged. Well, too bad. This is my video blog, which is also on my Oakland News Now blog, Deshaun Watson, massage therapist Jasmine Brooks calls Tony Busby liar on text messages. And as I read in this live stream that you should have a look at when you have a chance, uh, I simply said that Brooks defended Watson. She attacked Houston super lawyer Tony Busby on Instagram. The Florio is referring to her comments uh, regarding what was in the text message. And I simply believe she said she does not know any of the victims personally, nor was the correspondence a shared conversation between a victim and myself. That's notable. And Fuller did not mention that. I am unsure how my text got to a friend got taken out of context, sent around and used for this situation. Busby is playing a very dirty game and manipulating words in favor of his clients. That's something that Mike Florio fails to note, okay, in, um, in his post, okay? But, all right, that's what, she, that's what Florio fails to note. And there are people who try to trick her and saying, well, this is yours and everything here is yours. And they use the words against her when her words are quite clear. These are what she wrote and I read on my show. All right. But there is a much bigger, bigger problem. And, and I know she says he's always been professional. And the problem is this. Right here. Estimating demand for illicit massages businesses in Houston, Texas. Vanessa Boucher and Sean M. Crody from the Department of Political Science of Texas Christian. This is in 2017. It reads as follows. Illicit massage businesses are growing in number across the United States, yet they remain an understudied niche of the underground commercial sex economy despite implications for public health and criminal justice. This research fills an empty gap in our understanding of illicit massage businesses by estimating actual demand for these businesses in one U.S. city, Houston, Texas. We find that there are roughly 2,869 customers per day at illicit massage businesses in Houston. And that this yields total annual gross revenues of one hundred and seven million. All right. Now, what's the likelihood that any one of the twenty-two per persons that Tony Busby claims are victims of the Sean Watson are actually prostitutes? if they exist at all. I don't, I'm not, I don't believe that all the clients exist, but that's what name disclosure will reveal. And then it gives the introduction here and um, it talks about the growing problem of massage parlors. And then it reads uh, another recent study estimated the volume of demand specifically for online prostitution across U.S. cities, okay? Um, however, the study is limited in that it measures only the intent to purchase sex, 
not whether or not the transaction actually took place. All right. What's the point of this that I'm coming to? The point that I'm making is that if it is the case that the women who are ostensibly accusing Deshaun Watson of non-consensual sex turn out to be operating prostitution operations within their massage therapy businesses, then first of all, it means that Watson's sex was consensual and that if they asked him to sign an NDA or an NDA was signed, that they knew that what they were doing was not legal and they could very well have been coercing him into an illegal activity and then lying about it. Okay? That's what Mike Florio misses. This is specific to Houston, Texas. This section of the study explains why Houston was selected. It reads, in order to do this, we selected Houston, Texas as our case study. Houston is thought to be a major center of sex trafficking. According to statistics from the National Human Trafficking Hotline, 340 victims of sex trafficking were identified in Houston by the hotline in 2016 alone. And the plurality of these victims were working in commercial brothels, which included illegal massage businesses, National Human Trafficking Hotline. There are several potential reasons for the large number of sex trafficking victims in Houston and talks about local geoeconomic conditions and making it Houston vulnerable to sex trafficking and the area is characterized by a close proximity to the border, for example. And it discusses that the Houston area supports a variety of research facilities, diplomatic corner, and national businesses. Houston's geography, economy, and diversity all contribute to sex trafficking. Finally, the study determined there were 292 IMBs or illegal massage businesses in Houston in their study. And this was in 2017. All right. And then they went on to estimate the total demand for those, which is how they came to the economic count number that I mentioned earlier, 292, 292. Now, as far as the era of COVID-19 and, and massage parlors and sex trafficking, uh, Dallas Magazine interviewed the author of the study I just uh, quoted, uh, Vanessa Boucher, Associate Professor of Political Science at TCU. And she says that as far as the impact of COVID, first of all, for the illegal massage businesses, they're all completely shut down because the state has said that massage businesses, whether illicit or not, can't operate. Now, that being said, there's been some analysis looking at the survivability of the illicit massage businesses after the coronavirus because they're losing so much money right now. And then the question becomes, what is the workaround that they're finding? And apparently some of them, instead of being street level massage businesses with neon signs, they move to apartment complexes or private residences, not in a place where it'd be evident to law enforcement that they're still operating. And this specifically applies to the situation that Deshaun Watson finds himself in and this activity. And so my argument is that when he, when Rusty Harden says that Watson was engaging in consensual sex, he was. He was doing so with a person who just may very well be operating an illicit massage business. And from the study that Ms. Boucher has written and what her current comments point to, uh, that seems to be the case. Subscribe to Zenny62 and bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com. Oh, and before I finish... I want to add that if it is true that Watson was doing that, 
and not understanding this business and the Texans were supplying him with equipment and tables, the other question is, did the Texans know about this? And did they do, if they did and did not counsel Watson, then the Texans are equally culpable in all of this. Okay? So this is not something that's clean and and um and neat this is very messy very messy mike florio should be careful how he talks about this